we share With a dash of this and a pinch of that Mixed all up with care The best company and conversation Recipes and new creations We're cooking up something good here at home We are cooking up something good here at home Well, hello and good day to you, family. It's so nice to have you with us today. Thank you for dropping by our at-home kitchen. You're always welcome. Remember, always, anytime you see at homes on, you're more than welcome. You have my personal invitation to drop by anytime you want. It's always great when the family gets together. Speaking of family, I have a unique guest today who's going to show us how to make one of the most incredible pies you will ever taste in your life. She puts a spin on a good old apple pie like you've probably never tasted before, but you're going to want to, okay? I speak of family because uh, Trish Schweinberg and her husband Aaron are precious, precious people and worship leaders at our church at Greater Works. And they know how to do family. You say, well, Arlene, we're, you know, we're all family. But I'm telling you, they have four children and I have a photo here. Besides being a wonderful mother, Trish is an absolute incredible photographer who does just great things, has a studio. And uh, these are the children. And you can see there's three boys and a girl. There's Benjamin. Let me see if I can read over here and see where's Benjamin. I guess this is Benjamin over here, Benny. There's Judah. He's down here. This is Skylar. And she is so sweet. And little baby Aaron up here. I call him baby Aaron. He's getting pretty big now. And of course, Trish and Aaron. And what a wonderful family. I said to some of the crew before we went on the air, I said, you know, every child in America should have parents like these two as they parent their children. Nothing is too much for them. They make every birthday a celebration of life. And um, you almost feel like, boy, I wish I could have been at that party. It looks like so much fun. You know, when Skylar wanted to be, have a princess birthday, she really had a princess birthday. Everybody was in gowns. I mean, mom and dad was in a tux. And I mean, it was just awesome. And I tell you, that's time invested in family is so important. And uh, she made, well, how I found out about this pie was she said uh, on Facebook, Trish said, I'm in the kitchen with my hubby tonight and we're making something good. And I said, oh, wonder what that is. And pretty soon we found out because Aaron said, it's a pie. And that's what she's going to share with us today. Trish Schweinberg in just a minute. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's today's at-home hint. Refrigerated pie crusts can be great time savers when baking pies and may be used the same as a freshly made crust. And the taste is as good as most homemade pie crusts, flaky and delicious. If you've got a helpful hint, we'd like to hear from you. Send your hint to At Home Hints, Cornerstone Television, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. Here she is, Trish Schweinberg. Trish, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm Bless so you, glad sweetie. Glad to be here. Thank you Aww. for having me. Well, you know, you did the craft show with us a couple years ago, and she did such a great job with that. And then, I, as I said, when Erin said about this pie, and I saw a picture of it, I said, she's got to make that. <laughs> and how many people were bugging you about give us a recipe, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because well, it's a good recipe. Starts out basically with an apple pie, right? Right, yeah, that's your base, the apple pie. Okay, and you, you think, well, what's an apple pie? But she's going to show us what's an apple pie. Okay, so what do we start with? Let me move this out of your way. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our pie crust into the pan. And I see, I'm just going to show you this. This is what she uses, as I do, because you know what? We could make regular pie crust, but this is a time saver. And not only that, this is an excellent, tasty product. You can't really, I mean, you can't beat that. I can't. No, it's wonderful. Absolutely. And she has a deep dish uh, pie plate, not just a straight nine, but a nine inch, but it's a nice deep dish. And that's what you want because there's a lot of apples in this uh, particular recipe. Look how nice that unwinds. Mm, yeah. Just put that out there. You just and drop it in your pie pan. Mm -hmm. just press it down. You're not going to need the this sides. then, right? Let me get nope, this out of the don't way. don't need that. Okay. Just press it in. You want to just push it up if it's not quite fitting up to the top, just push it up with your fingers till it gets up to the top. It has to get to the edge though, right? Yeah. And that's all so you got to do So where did you get the, the original apple um, 
pie recipe? Well, the base of it started when I was actually in eighth grade in home ec class. Really? Um, yeah, and I kept the folder all these years and pulled it out, yeah. added a little bit of stuff to it. And Wait till you see what she adds to it. It's <laughs> worth the wait, I'm telling you. So you don't flute it or anything, you just let it like that? Nope, just don't lay it in to. there, okay. set it off to the side, and that's all you got to do for that part. Okay, and then you're going to start with the apples, of course. Yes. Apples and are next. what's that? What kind of apples are they? I like to use Macintosh because they're crisp, they're sweet, they're juicy, and it's a really good apple to bake with. Well, and it's always available too. It's not a seasonal yes. thing, yeah, and they don't available. like deteriorate to nothing. This she brought this with. Her. I think this is so cute. This is uh, an apple wedger. Is that what they call them? Yes, I call it my apple cutter. How, apple cutter, yeah. <laughs> but isn't it darling? Farberware makes it. I think that's neat. You want to show me how you do that? Sure. Just Place it right over your apple. So you have the core in the center. And then you just got to give it a real good push. <laughs> Sorry to squirt <laughs> That's you. That's all right, not a problem. I truly am the apple of your eye. <laughs> oh, look how nice the core That's comes all right out. Do, yeah. And you throw this away and you have all the wedges. Yes, it's all cut for you. So you all know you what's have nice? To do? They're all cut pretty evenly um, sized, too, which is nice. Yeah, it comes Terrific. out perfect. Perfect. You just cut the skin off your apple, and then you're ready. Sometimes you want to yeah, cut it in half again, and yeah, it makes it, it, it goes a lot faster. Okay, let me go ahead and, and uh, oh, you have to peel them then, right? Yes, you just cut the so skin off. So you peel off. them after. Okay. Yes. All right. You want to cut that other one? Here, cut one sure. more. Sure. How many apples are you using totally? About six or eight, depending on the size of the apples. If they're small, you want to go with eight. If they're you know a little bit bigger, you can go with six. Okay. Um, and the thing too is um, they get they brown easily. That doesn't does not change the the taste of the of the pie at all because they brown. But she did put lemon juice, right? Yes, you want to try to just squeeze a fresh lemon over it, and that will help them um, not to brown. Right, it needs that fast. little acid to keep that from doing that. Yeah. Okay, so we're just pairing up these couple of apples. Now what do we do? Now the next step you're going to add um, your in ingredients. So we're going to use uh, about a fourth to a third cup of flour and just sprinkle it over, just dump it in. Okay, and now that flour is going to do what to this pie? It's going to, all the juices that the pie creates when it's baking, that'll help yeah. absorb some of that juice and Thickens make it, it a up nice, a little bit? Yeah, okay. make it a nice um, that makes sense. consistency. Um, so you got your flour, now you have about a cup of sugar that you're going to dump over that, just dump everything in. Okay. Then you want to take your cinnamon, and I use about six shakes i shake it in there just a couple six times. shakes there's a <laughs> i love the way she measures oh about six shakes <laughs> that's just probably maybe like a half a teaspoon or something yeah. would you say and yeah. you know really that's up to what you like if you like more you could put more exactly it's, it's pretty much up to you i'm almost yeah. done here i'm almost done i'm almost done perfect i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> you're doing great am i doing good you are okay now here's where the excitement comes in because what she's going to add to this is going to blow you away i mean you're going to like it Tell us what it is. Yeah. All right, I have some Heath toffee chips, or little bites. Um, and you can get them just the toffee by itself. You can get them with chocolate in it. It all works and it all turns ah. out delicious. Um, so we're gonna put in a handful of those. And then I get- Now that's readily available anywhere? Yes, you go over to the chocolate chip section, okay. the baking section. It's always in the grocery store. Oh, okay. Um, then we have pecan chips that you toss that in too. So I'm gonna take a handful of the pecans. All right. And just. Sprinkle that those in. Those chips are just choply. These are the chips. Oh, those are chips. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can do them, you know, if you like the yeah. bigger ones, but I like that one. Yeah. Um, okay, and then we're going to toss in a handful of the toffee. Now, when you say handful, that's just like as much as you want at that point, because you're going to use some of that someplace else, too. Yeah, you're going to use this actually two more times. So you don't want to use it all up the first time. Yeah, so a third of the bag. Okay. Okay. Then you want to add just a couple drops of water just to moisten everything down, but you don't ah. want to put too much in. Right, because you'll make have a your, problem. Yeah, because you're going to get a lot of juice from the apples right. um, when you're baking it. Okay, so go ahead. So put in a couple drops of water. And I'm just, I'm still finishing up on this last little slice of apple, which, as she said, there's six to eight, depending on the size. Okay. It's about, what, a couple tablespoons, you think, of uh, water? Yeah. What you I'm need, dear? I'm going to grab a wooden Over there, spoon. Honey. Perfect. Okay, and just toss all this around. Okay. Just until it gets um, a nice Moistened glaze a on the apples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now I see vanilla here. Yes. I see, what is this? Oh, the caramel. The caramel. Um, Does that go in there? The 
vanilla we're gonna pour in. We're gonna oh, okay. pour in a tablespoon of vanilla. Okay. Some people like a little bit more, some people like a little bit less. I like less. that flavor it would put in here, but I don't think I've ever put that in an apple pie. Oh, I put vanilla in everything. Do you? Yeah, everything, I love vanilla. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next time people are going to Mexico or Haiti, have them bring you back authentic. Oh. Oh, oh my goodness. That would be it's wonderful. Awesome. Well, you know what? It's so much more um, pungent than what, because this is like any of this that we get here is imitation. They just yeah. make it, you know, but the real stuff is like, whew, it's excellent. I mean, when you use that, I, only imagine. I have a bottle of white vanilla that would came back from Haiti. Oh. oh. In fact, I think they might sell it at our church at the um, yeah. resource center. I'm going to have I to know get they some. Have some. Yeah, you will, because you'll love it. Okay. Okay, wow, does that look good. Okay, she's going to keep stirring. You're going to put any of this in there? No. Not yet. Okay. When we come back, she's going to put it into the shell, and then she's going to show you an incredible topping for her pie. We'll be right back in just a minute. That's all. If you're just joining us, you missed the whole first procedure on this incredible, what, what's the name, the official name of it? It changes, but it's uh, apple caramel toffee pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> Trish's. I think we called it in the, in the uh, recipe, we called it Trish's. Caramel toffee pecan apple pie. Because we could try to get all the stuff in, in there. But, <laughs> but anyway, she's got the crust line. She's mixed up her apples. There's caramel in here. There's toffee bits. There's pecans and all kind of other things. And she's going to throw that into her um, lined deep dish pie plate, okay, which is good. Here. Can I help you? Yeah, thank you. These are heavy with all that stuff in there. Just want to dump all the yeah. yummy stuff that. in there. Oh, my. Slide it around, get the pecans. Get every little bit that somebody's bite mama Perfect. used to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. We've got an apple right here that's trying to jump away Yum. from us. Okay. Some... All right. All right. So the next wow. thing you want to do is we're going to lattice the top of the pie. Okay, Actually, before we do that, yeah. we're going to drizzle this with caramel. Oh, why not? <laughs> why not? You got to. Okay, show, show them what this caramel is that you're using. It's I like to use smuckers. the Sunday syrup, yeah. The so Smucker's you would use caramel. that normally for ice cream, but she's putting that. So you're making a, uh, a latte or whatever. What do they call that? Um, what was the ice cream? It's called. Okay, help ah, me. Ah, what is it? Um, Dolce, Dolce de Dolce leche. leche. Okay. <laughs> kind of something like that. We saw that on the container because, you know, this wouldn't be right if you didn't have ice cream with it. That's what she says. Exactly. So we put that on top, okay? Okay, now we're gonna add a little, another handful. So I said, first. Some more? Yes, we're gonna add some more uh, toffee right on top of that. Jeez. And we're gonna add another handful of pecans on top of that. Wow. And you still have Sprinkle some left. Around. So yes. we're gonna use those later. We're not telling where. And then, then uh, you're gonna take a tablespoon of margarine, just cube it up. A butter, we don't use margarine, we use butter. A butter, okay, take a tablespoon yeah. of butter. Cube it up and just place it all over the top of the pie. Oh. It'll melt down into all that yumminess. You know, I don't mean to be smart about that, but, but margarine is really bad for you. Really? Because it's molecules. It's not really, I mean, it's like, it's bad. We've talked about that many times. I have a paper. I'll have to make you a copy of it because it's really bad for your body. Because oh, your body yeah. can't can break it up and just, you know, it doesn't go through your system right. So butter is better. I mean, okay. It, well, it's, it's, yeah, good to know. Very good to know. Okay, so what are we doing with the top of it? I mean, it's beautiful now. So. Yes, now you're going to make your, the top, your lattice for the top of the pie. Lattice, okay, that's yeah. nice. I like lattice. I like to use a pizza cutter because it goes a lot faster. And well, it it's sharper goes too. goes smoother. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes if you use a knife, it tears it too, you know? Yes. Well, yeah. It wouldn't with that because that wheel keeps it going. Okay. I always just cut off this very end just to make a nice straight line. On okay, both now, sides. How do you know how many pieces you're needing? How many strips? I like to go with about um, 10. Okay. So you just start cutting your strips. Okay. Oh, you make them pretty wide too, like 10? Yeah. Sometimes it ends up being a little bit more. Four. But one, two, three, four, five, six, six seven. Okay. Eight, nine, ten. Look at nine, that. Nine, ten. Yep. See, that's why kids have to do fractions in school and in addition and stuff. So they, learn. when they bake, <laughs> they know how many goes into that and how big it is and whatever, right? Exactly. Yeah. So the okay. first one you put on the edge. Yeah, you put on the edge. I like to put both of my. I start with. I oh, put both them on ends. the. Okay. Yeah, both ends. Just lay it on there. Okay. 
Okay, and then I take four strips and you put the four strips, sometimes you need to stretch them stretch out Stretch them bit. out so they reach the edge, yeah. And don't, it doesn't matter that it leans over the uh, edge of the bowl a little bit, right? No, we're gonna trim that trim off. Trim it off, okay. But yeah. you wanna make sure that it does go that far. But don't do it yet, because she has to do some other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so stretch them across. So lay all the pieces that way, vertical, first. Okay. Now you're gonna start your lattice. I always start this one underneath. So you go under, under and then the this first one goes strip. on top. Yeah, then you're just like you're go, weaving, right? Yep. Then you're going to go under. Under. And then it goes on top. And you can stretch it because it yep, will. Yep, you can stretch it. So you have to hold and the other. And then you're going to go under. And then this one ends on top. And then you can and on the pull edge it of that. over. Yep. Punch it back together. Beautiful. Okay, then you're just going to do that again. This one goes on top. Top of This it. one went under, so you go on top. Okay, so you and do the opposite of the yep, one before. Yep, just the opposite. Okay. Go under on top. Under, I love it. on top. You know, that, that always baffles people. It's like, oh, I could never do that lattice. It's very it's easy. It's not hard. Yeah. No, it's not hard at all. Do the same thing for your last two pieces. Okay. Go under, on top, under, on top. On top, yeah. Under, on top. And then, and then you can space one. them if you need to, like push yeah, some over a little bit. Yeah, once it's all on, yeah. yeah, then I kind of okay. sides. Okay, so this one goes on, on top. top. And this is going to go under, uh -huh. on top. And under, Look and how pretty. And under. Wow. Yeah. Now once you got that and you move your, like it's real easy to slide around because you're not like, you They're not in tight. Yet. Yeah. yeah. You can move it over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yummy. Now I like, you press down your edges just to kind of secure it. Yeah. And then I take my Good. pizza cutter again. Oh, do you? Okay. And I just trim up the, I go around the, the whole bowl. The edge. Just, yeah. The pie plate and I just trim it. But that's once you once you have pressed these because these have to be pressed into yes yeah you know, so that they like stick together or else they will pop up when the heat hits them. And yes. what are you baking this on, dear? Three fifty. For how long? I do it like forty five minutes. I check it. It's forty five to fifty minutes. So you have to make sure the apples are soft. Yes. And you also want to be sure that the the crust is baked, the bottom crust and the top crust. And so. Um, that's important to keep in mind. If you put a fork down in there and the apples are still hard, leave it in there longer. And if the top starts to get too brown, what do you do with that? Does that ever happen for you? Um, normally around 45 minutes to 50 minutes, depending on your oven, it comes out a perfect golden. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, because we're gonna put something on the top of that before you put that in, right? Yes, we Is that what you want me to shine. do? Yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna give her, you just need an egg white, right? Yes, just the egg white. Okay, so we don't use the whole, ah, look what I just did. I need another egg. Mm -hmm. I need another egg, Patty, please. That thing slid right out, and I tried to save it, and I cut it in half, and you can't have any yolk. That's happened to me several times. I know, it's like they're slippery today. Just gonna throw that in there. You have to start again if that happens, because you don't want the yolk in there. So, thank you, my dear. Appreciate it. Now, we're gonna try this again. She bakes a pie, can't even separate an egg. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> there we go. Now we got it. Once I keep, then I go after I do the pizza cutter and get those, trim it up on the sides and you just go around and just kind of push it all down. You make down, sure again. Secure it. Mm -hmm. Do you beat this, this up a little bit? Yeah, I just move it around just a little, little bit. bit, yeah. And then you take your brush. Yep, and just brush it on like you're painting. Oh my, there you go, girl. <laughs> And one egg white can actually do like four pies. Yeah, it doesn't take much, does it? Yeah, you just you need know. a real little bit. But you have to cover it all because the spots that you don't paint look ugly, don't they? Yes. They do. I can you tell. can. This pie is very forgiving, though. You can cover up your mistakes because you're going to drizzle all that yummy stuff on again. Okay, at the tell very us end. what you're going to drizzle now because we only have 30 seconds here. Okay. When this comes out while it's still hot, what do you do? You do your caramel, drizzle the caramel all over. First. Another handful of the toffee, another handful of sprinkle of the pecans over, and that's it. And then you have to wait till it cools down a little bit, yes. right? Yes, yeah, you wanna wait. That's like the hardest minutes. part is waiting. <laughs> but you know what, we don't have to wait because when we come back, we're gonna be in the dining room and we're gonna have a piece of this incredible pie. I wish you could be here, it's gonna be awesome. We'll be right back in just a minute. Well, here it is. I mean, the smell in here is so incredible. All you smell is apples and pecans and toffee and caramel. And here it is. There's the whole pie there. And I had Trish already cut a piece. Look, there is some juice there, but that's good because it's not a dry pie then. And then we need to take it one more step 
Take it up a notch. Take it up one more notch. And we made some ice cream balls that she's just going to spoon on top. Oh, yeah. But we're still not done. Oh, why not? We'll go for one more. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is what kind of ice cream is this? Dolce de leche by Dolce Briars. Dolce de leche. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> nobody knows what it means, but it sounds really good. <laughs> and then she's taking the caramel, you know, that caramel that you had, and we're just going to do a little drizzle, right? Yeah. A little drizzle little around, not there. too much. What is not to like? I'm telling you, you don't want to miss not getting these recipes. You have to get them. We've already told you how. But you can also go to our website at www.ctbn.org, and we have a website there, and the recipes are available with a monthly subscription. Very easy to do. Come, you know, all of them. The whole month's recipes are included, including this one. Thank you so much, Trish. Thank it's been such a joy, me. such wonderful. Always nice to have you there because it just wouldn't be the same without you. We'll see you next time right here at home. Furnishings provided by Levin Furniture, featuring Lane's Country Living Collection. Food provided by Jordan Banana Company, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Travosburg, Pennsylvania. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.